I'm just glad to be here. I'm a guest pastor here tonight, so I thank you. Man, praise God. Um, what's the great presence of the Lord here? Let's get the word out. It's a presence of God that, that visits on Wednesday night. You got to get a good midweek boost, uh, especially in the Northwest. You go through a whole bunch of stuff, and it's maybe a little wet and cold and rainy, and you're feeling bad. And uh, you Come into the house of God. It'll get, a, get you a good lift and some acceleration like a, uh, a V8. You should have had a V8. Remember that commercial old school? You got to be old school to remember that. Uh, I, I just I want to um, kind of talk to you tonight a little bit of what was sung. I wrote this earlier during the day as the Lord was speaking to me, and I was praying for tonight's service. And uh, the songs that we sang are just really apropos to the message, almost like we synced it together. But the title is "Renew Your Love," and um, to just embrace a moment that you can renew your love with God and, and then you're, that you love the things that he loves. All right, not just love God, but there's things that God loves and you should love the things that he loves. And may, and may your love for the things God has created grow so that you can grow. So that you grow healthy and strong and and vibrant and powerful and, and have longevity and, and blessing. All that comes from the way and the life that we live that's in alignment with Jesus. So the things that he loves, you get his love from loving those. Um, I kind of like it, if I had to use a physical example, it would, it would be like um, eating healthy. You know, we've been on the fast for a while, and and uh, and I've dropped a few ounces or so along the journey, and and uh, it's been good for me. But but I started realizing, I, I went down and with my brother. My brother's, you know, he just eats different than I do. Donald doesn't eat a bunch of junk, and he eats live foods and all kind of stuff, and and um, so, and I eat stuff out of a box sometimes, and which is really not good for you. And so I started realizing I needed to eat better, right? And you can realize that when, you, when you're not eating and everything looks good. <laughs> that little critter scurrying across the dirt looks good. Then you start realizing, this is, I got I to gotta do better. I got to eat better. I got to eat healthier. I got to I got to start doing the things God loves for me to have longevity. I can't do the things that I love or that's offered to me in a from a corrupt sinless environment, sinful environment. I got to I got to move into a new place. So it's an if it's an opportunity for renewal this month and I want to encourage you to renew your love. So your love for God, your love for others, your love for doing right things, your your love for each other, your love in your household and your family. Uh, just renew your love. Share with me to 1 John chapter 2. John is um, one of the great apostles that, that wrote, obviously, First and Second John. He also wrote the Gospel of John. He was close to Jesus. He was um, the, the one that hung with Jesus the longest. He was there when Jesus was finishing up his final orders or commands, commission. When his mother is there at the, at the cross and he is hanging, dying, he's dying. He's stripped naked. You've seen the, the pictures of him, you know, with the loincloth and, you know, he didn't have that. The, 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 uh, the Roman torture was so excruciating, painful, that they, they didn't have modesty after they beat the tar out of him. They hung him naked. Um, and he's just standing there, hanging, dying, <sighs> pushing himself up just to get the oxygen. 
because part of the torture was was to hang you, and then and then you and then when, as the nails you sunk, your, you couldn't breathe, and your lungs would collapse, and it'd be harder and harder to breathe, and they would torture you and beat you so that your lungs would fill with blood, and Jesus would be hanging there. This is this is brutal, and he and he sees his mother. And, and others around him, and he sees John, and he remembers his, his responsibility as the firstborn son, and her husband Joseph has passed, and Social Security has not been implemented, and who's going to take care of Mama? It was the son's responsibility. So Jesus always provided for her. And now he's dying on a cross. And he says to John, John, behold your mother. And he says to Mary, behold your son. And he passes the responsibility to his beloved disciple who willingly embraces it. May you willingly embrace the things God has for you to embrace. And John became special and powerful, unique to Yeshua. Unstoppable. No limits on John. They tried to stop John, but he was just unstoppable. They tried to torture John. We're going to boil you in oil. Boil me. Couldn't stop John. John get out of boiling hot oil like it's like it's a hot tub. Man, that was cold. Then they, they exile him to an island called Patmos because there's there's no safety or security. So there's wild animals. They're gonna kill him. They certainly will kill him. These wild, treacherous animals with no food, they'll kill John. Instead of killing John, he he writes the book of Revelation of Jesus Christ, the last book of the Bible. That's John. He's unstoppable. May, may God make you that way. May your love for him be so strong that your life habit for him matches that love and you become unstoppable. Somebody say amen to that. Make me unstoppable, Lord. Renew my love for you. And renew your love for me. Let's look at First John. We know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments, him being Jesus. The, the, J- John uh, talks to Jesus, but he doesn't talk about Jesus, but he doesn't talk in first person. Whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar. And the truth is not in that person. But if anyone obeys his word, love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. (laughs) You know, I've been reading a, a book um, called Jesus Freaks, and it's really just about uh, people that had extraordinary devotion to the Lord and uh, would not accept anything less than uh, full devotion to Jesus. They were tortured, they were killed, just put in prison, um, sacrifice, and the, and opportunity just to, to repent recant just say Jesus is not Lord just say you're not going and and sometimes you occasionally you'll see they would recant and then change and then within weeks or days sometimes hours say no nah, I didn't mean it that was just a moment of weakness God forgives me I'll never deny Jesus and then the resolute spirit rises in them right we, don't, we really don't have that test in America. 
because we have a, such a wonderful nation, a great country that's founded on the principles of the kingdom of God, that there really is no serious persecution of any real measurement when you measure persecution. All right. So if anybody tells you, well, man, I was persecuted because I wore my Jesus shirt at school and they ostracized me. Come on, man. Yes, you know, that's not persecution. It's not persecution when you can't find a remote control when the Super Bowl is about to start. That's really not persecution. It's the devil that hid it from me. The measurement for us is faithfulness to God. So renewal of your relationship, renewal starts with confession and repentance. Now you think, well, I'm, I'm perfect. I'm, I don't need any to confess or repent anything. Well, you're the only one here tonight because the rest of us have lots of stuff. Um, you say, well, listen, I'm, I've departed from evil. Good. So have I. But I'm not close to Jesus. When, when the reflection that's in the earth sees me, here's God's desire. They want the earth, God wants the earth to see Jesus. And what they see is too much of Gordon. I want them to see less of Gordon. And more of Jesus. That's why you can sing that song with such passion. And it ignites something. Start a fire down in my soul. And let that fire come and consume all of Gordon. So that all that's left is Jesus. I want Jesus. So there's times that you recognize you had that moment. You had that glance in the mirror. And, it's, and, and you're enough of the mirror that you're not looking at it darkly, but that you can see yourself. And then you go, man, God, make me more like you. You know what he does? He draws you closer. And then you get more like him and more like him and more like him and more like him. And then it's easy for you to forgive and easier for you to change and easier to give and serve and recognize when you're wrong and make corrections. It breaks some of the stubbornness in my way or no way. You just become sensitive and caring, and you start looking a lot like Jesus. Renewal starts with confession and repentance. Now, confession is a powerful force on its own, but it has to be accompanied with repentance. Um, so, I mean, uh, confession is to declare or say that you're wrong. You ever, ever done that before? I have, often. Um, but repentance comes with changing your mind. Not just saying I'm wrong, but it's also accompanied with changing your mind or doing differently. Metanoia, to to think differently or to change. So if you can't confess and say, hey, I'm sorry I did that, but you know, that's how I am. I've been like that since I was a kid, so take it or leave it. And if you don't like it, you don't like it. I guess you got to find. That's not, that's not his way. You might be acknowledging the fact that you're a knucklehead, but you're refusing to stop being that. That doesn't renew your relationship. It doesn't draw you to deeper places. You got to say, or you could go to the place where you'll go, yeah, I, I'm going to, I'm, this isn't, it's between me and God. It's just personal. I don't have to expose anything to anyone. The Lord knows. Yeah, he does know. And he's expecting you to deal with it, to reflect him in the earth. Come on. Not just about you. It's about all, all those following you and who are with you. And it's about her a lot more than it's about you. At least for your sake. All right. 
she should think it's about you and how to honor you and bless you, and she does. And then you build a great family, and you look like Jesus. So you make you missed it, you drift. Just be quick to confess it, and quick to change your mind. Man, I'm sorry. I'm sure I shouldn't have done that. And, and often I'll I'll jump to that. I mean, I make a mistake. I'm I'm quick. You know, I'm quick to try to deal with it, do it properly, make it happen, do what God's telling me to do. Because I, I recognize it starts with confession and repentance. Right. So get, get into that habit. Pick that one up um, to renew your love with the Lord. Is there some areas I need to confess? Now, listen, let me just qualify a little bit for you. Don't, don't, go, don't go to Facebook. <laughs> I'm going to empty my soul on Facebook. Ah, Facebook will never, they'll never forgive you. you you'll, you'll do something significant three years from now, and they'll be pulling that story out from January 2019. Yeah, don't, don't go there. Confess and repent to those you can trust, and you can trust the Lord and his people. Dear friends, I am not writing you a new commandment or a new command, verse 7, but an old one, which you have had since the beginning. This old commandment is the message you have heard, yet I am writing you a new commandment. Its truth is seen in him and in you because the darkness is passing. Somebody say amen to that. And the true light is already shining. Sometimes some things change, but eternal truths last forever. So John gives you a now and later. I'm not writing you a new commandment. This is an old commandment. But it's also a new commandment. It's both old and new at the same time. It's one I, that the Yeshua has taught us and we have learned it. But it's also new because it's renewed every day. You have, it's not something well, I used to. It's, it's new. This love of God, this desire for us or call for us to do something righteous and holy and faithful. Some things change, but there are some things, other things that are eternal. They just last forever. It's like that in the natural realm. It's like that certainly in the spiritual realm. Um, the things of God, the, the word of God, is, it's, it's not like a new word. Not like, it just, not like somebody just wrote a book about it yesterday and oh the bible this is just came out last week it's been here for from the beginning of of the writings of creation thousands of years yet but you can read the word and and it comes alive and a new revelation or insight comes every time you read it and you say and you're thinking sometimes man how come i didn't i must have read this a thousand times, I've never seen this part of it before because God brings new and old together, a new revelation from an old principle or concept because it's not new, but it's new to you. And it's new to the earth, and it's new in this environment. So God begins to mix those eternal things so that the best can, be re- can come back again, can be renewed. You ever been in a place where you have, um, it's your br- Somebody's taking you out for your birthday, and they know you real well, and you end up going to that special restaurant, right, your favorite place. Now, you've already been there so much and that they know you, and you come in and you go, oh, man, you took me to, give me a place, Burger King? <laughs> Chick-fil-A, yeah, on your birthday. Happy birthday. Now, you, you went to this real special place, and you never get tired of it. You think, man, 
I've been to other pl- this place so many doggone times. I'm sick of going here. Not if it's not if you have these special memories and special place that you sit and you like the food. It's just oh, I have the and you'll go in there and you'll order something that you've ordered there before, and it's and it tastes wonderful every time. But it still has that that mix of memory and that makes it warm and wonderful every time. May you have that with the king. That you come into the presence of the Lord and it's early in the morning and you see the sun shining in a way that that you've seen it shine before, but it's new. And you wonder why why you're alive and why you have kids. Why are you glad you live here? Realize how special God is and how faithful. Yeah. Renew your love with that. Renew your love with the special things. Or or you can continue to go 100 miles an hour. And you're full of stress and pressure and difficulty and challenges and everything upsets your apple cart. And when you're in a car, you're yelling at the traffic. You Turn! Turn! I was like, okay, you had to stay at a red light for another 37 seconds. Come on, man. But you raise your blood pressure and you're just honking your horn and let it go. Find that place that God has for the old to become new and the new to become special. And the love we have for God. Verse 9, anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in the darkness. This term that that is translated in the Greek for brother and sister is, is really a word that means believer. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister in Christ is still in the darkness. Anyone who loves their brother... And sister lives in the light. And there is nothing in them to make them stumble. But anyone who hates a brother or sister is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. They do not know where they are going because the darkness has blinded them. It's a, it's a dichotomy for anyone to claim a living relationship with Jesus Christ and to hate people that God has created. We really should fight against, and this is a tendency that you mean humans have, all of us are humans. We have this tendency to hate people or to disassociate ourselves with them, right? Right? And, and I'm not saying you have to love everything people do. There's People do some stuff, right? But you have to love the people in spite of the behavior. And I'm just telling you, if you're having uh, um, conversations with, that you think are with yourself, it is in your own spirit and soul, your mind, but it is a, there is a spirit that's accompanying you there a spirit of hate and discontent and lies and manipulation that is trying to deceive you and it's walking you down a path that you don't even really realize you're walking down the path. And you're going to be far from the light and far from the love of God. And you, and you sometimes you can, you can sit in a, pay, a, a, a position where you think everything is cool and I'm right with God and we're good, right? And you're not even close to him any longer. You just have drifted because hate blinds you. And it doesn't, now listen, it doesn't start with hate. It just starts with a little dislike. You find something in somebody or some situation or some circumstance that you just dislike. And then you just dislike it a little and then it keeps going, doesn't change, and you now convince yourself that, you dislike it a lot, and the next thing you know, it's not it you dislike any longer. It's him that I dislike. 
because he's the he's the or she is the person that produces that. And then and then you start thinking they're doing it on purpose. And then when they're laughing, they're laughing at you. I'm sick of these people. And how dare they? And next you know, that little bit of thing that was in you, that was just a little bit of disdain and uncertainty, is now give birth to hate. And you can't reflect Yeshua. And so you think I'm in this really love for God. I'm Lord Jesus. But you've embraced a counter spirit that's against God. So your life, as you're journeying through work and school and resources and plans, it's full of darkness. And nothing seems to work, and I can't get this, get over this, and this is not, not doesn't work for me, and I'm sick and tired, and the Bible's not even true, and no one ever cares. And you're just so frustrated and intense. It's just because for a second you made the decision that the darkness was your light. And come back. Come back to the light. You see people in hate, they're in darkness. Just shine the light. Uh, carry a flashlight? No. That's not the light. It's the love. It's the love that's the light. Now, listen, be, be careful now. You get somebody that's a ravenous wolf, right? right? And they're angry and mad. You just got to be, you got to love them, but you got to love them wisely. Can somebody, you hear me? Love, love people, but love them wisely. If I got somebody who wants to kill me in my sleep, I, I may not be sleeping when they're sleeping, <laughs> when they're awake. I just, I just, I may be looking at one eye, put them in the other room, put a bell around their toes if they move. <laughs> Live in the light that God's love provides, and you will overcome. Father, renew our love for the light. Mr. President, this is the second time I've talked to you today. I cannot. I'm, I'm in the service here at OCC. Now I can't talk to you. Thank you. You think you could run the country without me? He needs my number and some prayer, too. My golly. You know, one of the fast tracks for us in, as believers, which will always cause you to overcome, is if you'll embrace love as a tool, it, it will cause you to live in the light while somebody just really in close proximity to you is living in the darkness. And they can't distinguish. They think they're in the light, but their light is darkness. And the only way to bring them out of the darkness into the light is through love. Because God doesn't just love. God is love. To introduce them to God, don't quote some scriptures. Demonstrate love. And you'll demonstrate God. And I wonder why. Why? I don't even know why I even like you so much. You just, you just, why are you so nice to me all the time? And every time, you know, and all of a sudden they'll have a moment of confession. You know, when I was, when I was a kid, and they're telling you their whole story now. And then you got a choice then to embrace them. Because maybe the story is a little shocking. You can you gotta embrace them or you can reject them. If you reject them, you're driving them deeper into darkness. If you embrace them, you have a chance to escort them to the light. Pretty cool stuff, man. And you'll see people that are just like enemies become friends. 
people that just don't like you, they'll start loving you. Their hearts will change. Watch this. Here's a cool thing, too. Once you embrace that way, God comes to establish that way in you and make you one that can run in the light while the atmosphere is in the darkness. If, if we turned off all these lights, every light here was completely dark, it'd be hard to get out of here. Unless you have a light. If you have a light that may not be big, a light enough to, I mean, strong enough to light the path for everybody, but if you could light your path, you can give everybody else a way out. Hey, follow me. Follow me because you got the light. And they, in a complete darkness, they can find their way. They say, hey, follow that guy with the light because they're in the darkness. And it just, God just gives us an opportunity to be salt, seasoning, the flavor, and to be light. And what is that? Love. Let that love that God provides cause me to overcome. And it's amazing how you can overcome in everything. People, you own a restaurant, they love the restaurant because they love the people and they come all the time. Or they love your business, or they love your style. I love your voice. And they might just love your voice. Say so buying all your albums and they're hearing, hearing your, or they love your books. Come on. You have to be in the darkness, be in the light, because the gift of God is in you. And that gift is a gift of love. And whatever gift that he's given to you, sharpen it by doing things his way. And his way is always the right way and always works. It's powerful. And you will prosper in this in a way that you haven't prospered before. And God will renew this deep love that you have for him. Jump with me as, as we close to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. You guys have read 1 Corinthians a zillion times before. But we're going to make it a zillion and one. I praise God for that worship. That was great worship today. Man, that was awesome. The first Corinthians, Paul is writing, and Paul, Paul, is, Paul was one of those guys that had the reverse of the journey. You know, he was the, the Jew of Jews and very devout and in his own mind, but he was persecuting the church and full of hate, full of hate, going into people's houses, dragging them out, putting him in prison, torturing him. He was just full of hate. When Stephen was stoned, full of hate in his heart, there when he was stoned him, stood in agreement with that, full of hate, man. Deep, passionate hate. And then God flips him on, on the highway. Just journeying, and all of a sudden, here comes Yeshua, and he says to him, your light is really darkness. And you can't win the, the way you're going. And he says, who are you that you're talking to me? I'm Jesus. And it's hard for you to kick against me and prevail. You can kick against the goals, the scripture says. That means it's, a, it's a, a point, a stick that had a point that helps, that you would use to, to prick animals, make them go faster or farther. He says, it's hard for you to kick against that. You're going to hurt yourself. It's painful. So you can't win this battle, this path that you're on. You can't. And so Paul flips. He, just, he flips. He changes him. Now, here's the deal. He's in darkness, so the Lord gives him darkness. And when he gets out, stands up, he can't see. He's blind. So since he was in darkness, God gives him a taste of darkness. And so he just he can't see. And so then he comes to his guy and says, hey, you, you're my man here, Ananias, and I want you to go to Paul, uh, right? He's a king. I'm doing crazy great stuff through him. 
and nations and generations and generations of people are coming in to the kingdom through his writing. I want you to go lay your hands on him. Pray for him. And Ananias says, he's a yahoo. That guy's no good. He's full of hate. He doesn't hate and love anything or anybody. The guy says, no, oh, no, 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 no. He's a chosen vessel. He's full of hate now. But I'm going to make him full of love. Flips, flips Paul. And Paul writes this in 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I am only a sounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy, which he does, and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, mountains represent kingdoms, faith that can move kingdoms, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all my possessions to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. All our efforts are useless without love. Useless. Anything you do that doesn't incorporate the love of God, it's just a waste of time. It's, it's useless. Love is patient. Practice it. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. Love is not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. And it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects. It always trusts. It always hopes. It always perseveres. Love never fails. Where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. Love will never go away. It will never disappear because love makes things complete. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now, we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. No secrets. And now for us, these three remain. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Love always wins. Love always wins. We love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Come on.
take a moment and pray with me, please? Father, we love you with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength. Thank you for depositing your love in us. You came and found us and loved us and cared for us and fought our enemies and defeated them because you love us. We love you too. We choose love. We choose love as a way of life. We choose love as a way of being. We choose love. We will practice love. Practice patience and kindness and practice being humble and, and giving honor. And practice sacrifice and serving. We love you, God. And we choose to love each other. I choose love. I choose the way of love. Because love always wins. Love never fails. Love is always going to be complete. And as I walk in love, it will never disappear. And I have access into the kingdom at any time because of love. Seal our way, God, and strengthen our ways. And as you love us, help us to love others. Overflow us with your love. Saturate us in your love. Sink us, drown us in your love. Love always wins, so we embrace it. In Jesus' name.